Welcome to the first of who knows how many lectures on Chapter 6's coverage of the reactions of alkynes. Now, for students who are actually in my class right now, I bet you're probably thinking, why in the world did Mike skip Chapter 5 and vault straight from Chapter 4 to Chapter 6? Well, the answer is because I think that Chapter 5 and the subject that it addresses were very significantly misplaced by the author of our textbook. Personally, I prefer to talk about the reactions of alkynes, chapter 6 is coverage, immediately after talking about the reactions of alkenes. It, to me, just makes logical sense. Hence, I'm completely bypassing chapter 5 for the time being, but we'll get back to it according to our schedule later on. After today's lecture, you should be able to do the following. Name alkynes using the IUPAC naming system. Identify the hybridization of atoms in alkynes, and explain in terms of atomic and molecular orbitals what that actually means and correctly draw the mechanisms and predict the products formed when HX is added to an alkyne, halogens, or X2, are added to alkynes, and halogens and water are added to alkynes. And lastly, be able to explain keto-enol tautomerism. Before we get started, however, I want to show you something really cool. In North American culture, at least, we frequently hear people talk about contraception by using the phrase, the pill. What in the world is the pill? Well, as it turns out, the pill is actually comprised of two different compounds, ethinylestradiol, whose structure is shown right here, and norethinadryl, whose structure is shown here. You'll note that each of these compounds are actually derivations of the molecules shown over here, estradiol and progesterone. Parenthetically, ethinylestradiol, which is once again a derivative of estrogen, has a carbon-carbon triple bond right here at this position. In other words, it's an alkyne. This molecule itself is an orally bioactive estrogen used in many formulations of oral contraception pills. Progesterone is added to the pill because of major concerns that exist about ethinylestradiol being added in concentrated form and having some connection to endometrial cancer. Okay, well, I realize that isn't extremely uplifting, but at the very least you can see that alkynes, carbon-carbon triple bonds, are or can be functionally useful. One thing I want to point out is that in the names of each of these two compounds, ethinylestradiol and norethinadryl, you'll notice that there's a YN in their names. That YN derives from the term alkyne. Now I want to teach you how to name alkynes. Similar to the pattern we followed in naming alkenes back in chapter 4, when you want to name an alkyne, you begin by naming the parent chain. And what in the world is the parent chain? Well, assuming that you don't have any functional groups that are higher priority than the carbon-carbon triple bond, the parent chain is the longest carbon chain that contains the triple bond. We find that chain, and then we name the compound using the suffix Y-N-E in the place of the suffix A-N-E. So if we had an alkyne version of ethane, we would call it ethine. If we had an alkyne version of propane, we would call it propyne, and so forth and so on. Next, we number the carbon atoms in the chain. Now, of course, we're going to number in the direction that gives the triple bond the lowest number, assuming that there are no other functional groups in the alkyne that have higher priority. And lastly, we write the full name, placing the substituents at the beginning of the name and the parent chain name at the end. And one quick thing I want to tell you that's sort of just parenthetical, but nevertheless very important. Alkynes that have a hydrogen coming off of the triple bond are called terminal alkynes, while alkynes that don't are called internal alkynes, which leads us to some wonderful lecture questions. What is the IUPAC name for the following alkyne? And give the systematic name of the compound shown here. Now the alkynal question I'm going to let you do on your own because I think that you have the ability to do it. I do want to focus on this one because you'll notice this is not an alkyne. However, our chapter does mention it briefly. This is actually a compound that has two alkenes in it. How in the world do we name a compound that has two alkenes in it? Well, we call it a diene. Now you'll notice this is a seven-membered cyclic compound that contains two alkenes. Hence, it is called a cycloheptadiene. I'll let you insert the numbers as well as the names of the substituents onto that name on your own.